Welcome to episode 2. In this video, we're covering all these things. Wow. When it comes to picking the engine for your LS Miata, it's pretty much just going to be whatever you want within the LS family. Whether you go with an LS1, LS2, LS3, LS6, or any Vortec iterations, they're going to fit just fine after the required modifications. The only LS you're going to have a hard time swapping is going to be an LS7, and that's because the dry sump system and the longer stroke are going to interfere with your steering rack and your subframe. So if you want to make LS7 power, just use one of the other LS blocks and put some money into it. And you know what, there's so much info out there about how to make power with your LS that we're not even going to touch that in these videos. For your transmission, your best bet is going to be to use an F-Body T56. The T56 just fits well, the shifter is in the right spot, and it's going to be able to take all of your power and probably any mods that you do as well. If you're having a hard time finding a T56, you can also use a CD009 out of a 350 or 370Z. These are normally like a lower purchase price, but you will need an adapter bracket like this guy right here so that it can mount to your LS block. There's quite a few swap kits out there for mounting a CD009 to an LS engine, but the Collins one seems like the best value pick from all the research I've done. If you want to go with an automatic transmission, you're going to have to figure most of that out yourself. Automatics are rare in the V8 Miata community, and I've yet to see a go-to automatic setup. I've heard of guys blowing 4L60s and 4L80s being really challenging to fit. So if that's something you really, really want, you're just going to have to test fit stuff and play with it. For your rear end, your Miata diff is not going to be able to take the LS power. So your go-to rear end swap is going to be a Ford 8.8 IRS out of one of these cars. Now not all of the 8.8s have the same mounting ears, so if you're going with an aftermarket diff mounting kit, make sure that you have the right donor 8.8 .8 to match with your mounting kit that you have. The T-Bird diff is an iron housing and most of the others are going to be an aluminum housing. You're going to save about 20 pounds going with the aluminum version. However, the iron is going to be stronger, but man, you would have to be making a lot of power to worry about breaking an 8.8. .8. So the strength versus weight ratio, ratio, the strength versus weight ratio here is completely up to you and what you think suits your build best. Although there are other diff options available, an 8.8 .8 is just going to be super easy to find. They're dirt cheap. There's tons of aftermarket support for them. They're already proven in the LS swap community, and they can take like 800 horsepower when you have supporting axles. The next most common diff swap is going to be a GM Getreg diff, and you know if you have one sitting around or prefer them for some reason, you can go ahead and use that too. There are swap kits and axles available for them in the LS community. Let's talk about your axles. So your axles are going to be the weakest part of your rear end swap, but thankfully, there's a bunch available just based on your budget and how much power you're expecting to make. So Monster Miata and DSS both offer a variety of axles that both work for the 8.8 .8 diff swap. Monster Miata is going to be your value pick for anything in the 4 to 500 horsepower range, whereas DSS is going to give you a variety of options all the way up to 900 horsepower. They just cost a lot more. We've put the links for both of those in the description if you want to check them out in more detail. If you're going with a GM Gitrag diff, V8 Roadsters is going to be your go-to for all of your Getrag mounts and different axles ranging from 400 to 650 horsepower. For your drive shaft, it's going to depend on what mounting kit you use as that will affect the length of your drive shaft. Both V8 Roadsters and Monster Miata offer pre-made drive shafts that bolt up with their respective kits. Obviously Monster Miata is going to be for an 8.8 .8 and V8 Roadsters is going to be for a GM Getrag. Otherwise, once you have your engine, tranny, and diff mounted in place, just grab some measurements and take it into a local drive shaft shop and get it made up. Or you can go online to like DSS and get it done there as well. Easy peasy. I got mine done locally at a great shop and it was like 500 bucks. For your exhaust options, you don't have a lot of options. Your choice is going to be dependent on whether you want just a good, affordable LS build, or if you want to squeeze every possible horsepower out of that LS block. For your most affordable exhaust option, you can get some Pontiac G8 exhaust manifolds. This is what Monster Miata includes with their kit, and they're definitely not going to be the prettiest or best flowing exhaust options, but hey, if they get your car on the road, that's a great start. Your next step up is to get some shorty swap headers from Sanderson. These are only inch and a half primaries, so they're not going to make a whole bunch more power than the manifolds, but hey, they gotta flow better at least. At least better. Just a bit. Gotta be. Not manifolds? Not These are available right on Sanderson's website, 
and you just choose which LS block you're using, and then you choose if you get it coded or not. They're about 400 bucks plain or 600 bucks coded, which isn't that bad. Now your only really good exhaust option that you have is to use the V8 Roadster's long tube headers. These are inch and three quarter primaries and were built specifically for LS swap Miatas. Now the downside is that they only fit with the V8 Roadster's front subframe. However, these are proven on the dyno to pick up more than 20 horsepower compared to your Sanderson shorties. Now, these are 1600 bucks ceramic coated and 1100 bucks raw, but you know what? That's the price you pay for good exhaust. I've also heard of people using hooker block huggers and modifying the passenger side, but when you look at buying a set, they're almost the same price as the Sanderson shorties, so I think that's really only an option if you have an extra set laying around that you want to cut up. But know that if you have them, that's an option. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll see you in the next video where we go over everything to actually get all of these parts to fit.